Okay. Hey everybody. Thumbnail. Thumbnail. <laughs> Content creator finds. And you'll be able to find the self elect that I'm talking about. That's so ghetto. Hey Fox Babes and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to become an influencer in 2024. All right, everybody. So I actually got my book to help me keep me, you know, on track. But first, we're going to talk about what is an influencer. An influencer is a person with the ability to influence people or buyers of a product by promoting it on their social media platforms. So it's your job to create high quality content by demonstrating their product on your social media platform. Let's get into finding your niche. I'll give y'all the definition of niche. So niche is a specialized segment of the market for a particular type of product. And the lamest term is basically you just finding what you already create or what you're passionate in. So your niche can be either hair, fashion, wellness, fitness, or beauty. And that's how you really define your niche. A lot of people don't understand that some people are already creating content around their niche. They just don't really know that it's their niche. So a lot of people, if you're already creating content, you're doing makeup videos like come do my makeup with me or get ready with me. And you're doing your makeup. That's your niche. And you're going to stick to that. So you're going to basically be reaching out to brands that kind of sell beauty products. If people are already commenting it underneath your... um of your content be like oh my gosh girl where did you get that brush from where'd you get that foundation go foundation from where'd you get that mascara from boom cha-ching that's money in your pocket because now you can reach out to a brand that sells mascara and be like you know this is the mascara I use etc etc and now you're bringing more awareness to that brand and more money to that brand in your pocket they will give you a code and a lot of times you will earn money from the people that's using your code Let's talk about growing your platforms as an influencer in 2024. So the first thing we're going to get into is your bio. And I'm going to show an example of my bio so you can have a better visualization of what your bio should look like. So your bio should include, you know, what your niche is. That way brands can kind of figure out if this is going to be a good fit or not. And it's up to you if you're going to put your email in there. On my bio, I put PR slash collabs and I put my email. That way they can email me as well. It just gives more professionalism. If you're not comfortable putting your email on your actual bio, then you can just not put it up there and they'll still reach out to you um, via DM. Let's get into focus on your niche content. I need you guys to understand that you need your content to be strictly focused on your niche. You do not want your content to be everywhere. You don't need to have a content about your niche and then the next video be about a freaking cat and a dog fighting over uh, something or whatever, whatever the case may be. It's going to confuse the algorithm. It's going to confuse the brands. And it's gonna confuse your followers because it's just like I thought you were making content about hair and now you're talking about this. No, you need to make sure you stick to your niche and make sure your content is good quality, make sure the real covers make sense. And I'll show you guys a couple of like real covers um as well. You just need to make sure you focus on that. Please don't, because I have learned that the hard way. And I've seen others do that and they're kind of wondering why like they're not really seeing the growth that they're seeing because the content's everywhere. It's not strictly focused on one thing. Let's get into engagement and I love talking about engagement. Please do not just post out content and do not engage with your followers. Like you're, everybody acts like a kind of a celebrity, like you don't have to social support back. And how do you expect anybody to engage and support you if you're not reciprocating that energy? So what I mean by engagement is if you post a reel, I need you to make sure that you are, you know, going back and responding back to those people who commented. Now, I know a lot of times you may not have enough time because there's so many comments. That's fine. If you have like over a thousand, you know, comments or 500 or 200, just take it you know, day by day, if you can only just do this certain amount, respond back or whatever the case may be, just make sure that you are supporting back. You know, look at your followers stories, kind of interact um, and things like that. And also I will go on the shade room and engage on um, their platform because it's so huge and there's so many people that be on there. That way people can come at you and they can kind of figure out who you are and what you do. 
and so they can follow you so that's what i mean by engagement just make sure you do not overdo it because you can get restricted on doing too much engagement so in my opinion i would probably engage for like 45 minutes and try to engage with like five to ten accounts within that 45 minutes or maybe 15. you just don't want to overdo it as well like i said because you will get restricted but my the biggest key to growing is engagement so the last thing I'm going to talk about is collabing with others um, or for instance, OPA, which is using other people's audiences. What I mean by that is if you can find another uh, content creator or influencer within your niche, you guys can collaborate. You guys can go out to lunch or do dinner or do whatever the case may be that you guys, um, you know, are together in. And then what you can do is collab on a post or a reel. And you know, like when you finish, you know, doing your reel and you can literally click um, collaborate. You collaborate with the other person. That way you're using their audience and you're using your audience, y'all collabing, and that's gonna help y'all um, performance or engagement go up. People are gonna be like, well, who is this person? Like, and they're gonna come back and follow you. So I definitely recommend you collabing with others. Um, it doesn't really matter how the following is because at the end of the day, you guys are using each other's freaking platform. I don't care if y'all collaborate and y'all only get like 5,000 views. That's still 5,000 people that viewed your content. And now people are getting, you know, to know you and to know them. And they're just like, oh, okay. So and I would definitely try to be consistent with that as well. If the person that you're trying to collab with is not in state, which is kind of majority of people's problems, you can literally collaborate on a post. If you guys are in the same state, same area, definitely collab together in, at a restaurant or whatever the case may be. So that way it's just, it's just more easier for you. So definitely, please, please take heed of collabing with others. Please, at, like I literally have been doing this for a while and it definitely has helped my platform grow and my analytics skyrocketed. I will also say this, when you are posting your content, you want to make sure that you are um, using either keywords or hashtags. In my opinion, I actually do not use any type of hashtags. I use mostly keywords. If you're going to use hashtags, make sure that it's specifically to that niche, okay? And even when you're putting like keywords. So for me, in my um, captions, I'll put in SEO or you can put KW as keywords and you can literally put in the keywords. So for me, I could be like black content creator, um, how to become an influencer, how to get PR packages, PR unboxing, things like that. Because when you type it in on Instagram explore page, it'll still come up the same. I found it that keywords are way more better than hashtags. But if I'm going to use hashtags, it's going to be specifically to that niche. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your pitch. Okay, so I'm gonna give y'all a definition of a pitch. So a pitch is a proposal or a presentation where the influence communicates their values for a potential partnership. In the beginning stages of me becoming an influencer, I didn't know what a pitch was. Like I literally had to go research, um, you know, what it was, how it needs to be put together. And a lot of these, um, influencers gave me an example of what a pitch should look like and so i created my very first pitch now it was not bad because i was getting brand deals but i felt like it could have been worded a little more differently so um just make sure like when you are presenting your pitch to just make sure that it's just you know really professional like don't be nervous to you know pitch to these brands you know like rejection is rejection if you get a no that's fine and a lot of times if you get a no that just means that they didn't have any open campaigns available or they just probably did not want to work with you. You know how many brands are out there? <laughs> like there's so many brands out there like, man, rejection to me is just like, okay, well, next. Like Ariana Grande said, thank you, next. So let's dive deep into what your pitch should look like. So you need to make sure that you have an introduction, you know, meaning, you know, let them know who you are, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to include like demographics in there, like my following is females and they're college students and they're in this particular state, you know, that's kind of optional. But if you do want to put that in there, that's what you want to include. 
Um, you want to put in all of your content style or you can say niche. You want to make sure that's included in there. And you want to also let them know like the benefits that the brand can expect from the collaboration. So you also want to kind of give them a vision of how you're going to present their brand on your social media platforms. The whole goal is to convince them to work with you. Why should they work with you out of all those people that are trying to collab with them? You need to be, you need to just stand out. That's why I said the pitch has to be professional. That's what's really going to sell is your pitch. Okay, everybody. So we're going to talk about a media kit, what goes on a media kit, and why you need a media kit to get brand deals. Let me tell y'all something. Before I even became an influencer, like... I had no idea what a media kit was. I don't even think I had a media kit because I actually had a brand reach out to me. I had no pitch, no media kit, no nothing. I just was in the beginning stages of building my platforms and trying to create high quality content. And so when they reached out to me, I was like, um, okay. And my fiance was like, okay, no, like the next time, a, you know, a brand asked you to do that. Now it's time to like charge and stuff like that. And I was just like, wait a minute <laughs> like so this is what influencer is like and trust me like i didn't know i didn't even reach out to no brands okay like i still was still freshly new like like i said before i was watching youtube video after youtube video just to try to get a better understanding of what influencer is and it's like it's not as complicated as y'all as y'all think or make it seem a lot of people be nervous, you know, trying to reach out to brands. They feel like they're going to get a no or they feel like not, they're not going to make a lot of money. And let me tell you something. Your mindset is what's going to make you either successful or fail. And my mindset in the beginning was horrible. My fiance had to convince me to reach out to brands because I was like, no brands going to work with me especially no brand's gonna pay me and around that time i had like five to like six thousand followers at that time so my following was good my engagement was still you know pretty decent so it was just like he's like nah like you you got the platform you got the engagement like reach out to them and i still was like nope don't do that to yourself don't be like me and sometimes still to this day i still have my little doubts and fears but i understand that those doubts and fears is just, is what's going to take you like down to the ground it's not going to make you go up so when you're getting into this influencer journeys be confident and be you you know i compared myself a lot don't compare yourself either because there's people that have been in this game way longer i don't care if they've been in it for th for freaking 30 days and they made ten thousand dollars okay and that's them you know what i mean so don't go into this with a negative mindset i want you to be as positive as possible brands will work with you you will get paid and start speaking that to yourself like you know what I got this. I got this under control. I got my knowledge. I got this. Like, start speaking those positive affirmations to yourself. And then watch how everything is going to come to you all at once. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. I wasn't expecting this. And that's okay. So, I just wanted to just throw that in there. I just wanted to give y'all some type of motivation that I had to give myself. And also, my fiance had to give to me. And I wanted to basically give it to you guys. So let's get into what a media kit is. A media kit or a press kit is when the influencer has a portfolio that has essential information about their presence. Now, Embrya, what goes on the actual media kit? So what goes on the media kit is basically like an introduction or a short bio, kind of like in the middle or however your media kit is formed. And you want to put like a couple pictures of you on there as well. And if you haven't worked with any brands, that's fine. If you have some really good professional pictures, you can or if you actually have professional pictures from another brand, definitely put that on there. You want to put your analytics and statistics. What I mean by analytics is you literally go into your um, Instagram professional dashboard and you're going to put in there your male percentage rate and your female percentage rate, how much your reach is and things like that. Like that's all you're putting um, for that. So they can kind of see on uh, what what your target audience is and especially like if you're going to work with like brands that sell women stuff you want to make sure that you're reaching a certain amount of women demographics you also want to put in previous collaborations if you do not like i said if you do not have any previous collaborations that's perfectly fine because i didn't and so you don't have to put that there that's not going to stop you from getting you know brand partnerships at all i promise you it's not just like how that brand reached out to me they didn't even know if i even work with other brands or not 
they just reached out to me so like i said it's perfectly fine you also want to put in some type of contact information and this is something that they will see you don't have to post your media kit on your actual like platforms because that has like your information on there so on mine i'll put in the email if you have a phone number if you want to put that that's fine there's not really brands that are really going to call you but there are some brands out there that will call you and really talk with you so you can kind of get to know um the person behind the brand or whatever the case may be i've actually had a few phone calls with some brands um and they're just kind of just really just going over how the collaboration is gonna be what they expect from you things like that that's completely up to you but that's what your media kit should you know look like if you need help creating a media kit i'll definitely um go check out how to create a media kit if you still stuck you can always book a one-on-one -on -one consultation call and i will walk you through every step of the way i got you now you're asking like well brie why is a media kit so important and media kit is important because it gives you the opportunity to uh, for brand partnerships and it gives you more professional presentation because a lot of times brand wants to just look at what your demographic is, if this is going to be the right fit. And like I said, you want to make sure you have pictures of your media kit so they can physically see you like, okay, no, she will be, you know, the perfect fit for our brand, right? And even sometimes, even if you send a brand your media kit, sometimes they'll even still ask you, well, can you screenshot your demographic of the male and the female um, range, even though that you put it on your media kit? they still will still ask for it because i don't i hope this doesn't happen but some people lie on the media kit just to get that brand collab you know what i mean so make sure you're being completely honest in your media kit because like i said it's, it's very seldom where brand will still ask for like a screenshot of something so that can you know make sure that you are telling the truth and make sure everything just kind of aligns with their brand and what they're looking for out of it so we're going to get into a little bit about scammers. Now, I had came across way too many scammers. And I'm going to show you guys like a couple of examples of what scammers will look like. If you kind of unsure, like let's say you get like an email, right? And it kind of looks like realistic. Go to their, um, to their profile, go to their website, go to the reviews. And if you see anybody commenting underneath their actual content go to them go to that profile if you can if they're not private and be like hey um i was trying i had got this email from this brand i just want to make sure like they're legit and i've done that plenty of times and um a young lady was like no they're legit i've been working with them for like a year boom okay bet then you can proceed if they say no girl it's a scam or then haven't reached back out to you like I said, I need you to really go to their website and just really look at how their website is. If they have reviews, you know, make sure it kind of doesn't sound like fake. If they have an email, maybe you can reach out, you know, via email to them. It's almost like a cold email in a sense. Like you're sending them like, hey, I had got this email from this brand. Can you know, let me know if this is legit or not. And sometimes some of these DMs or emails just get scammed. Like, it just really does. It all just depends on if you're going to do your research or not. You go on YouTube and see if any brands have, not any brands, anybody has done, like, videos. Maybe go on Amazon, because sometimes these brands are on Amazon. So, I just want you to do your research well. Now, we're going to get into creating content for brands. All right, so the first tip I'm going to give you guys is having good lighting. You want to make sure that when you are filming another um, brand's product, especially if you're trying to promote it, you need to make sure that the lighting is good. Even if you can go outside or if you're in your room or anywhere in your house, you want to make sure that the light is bright enough. And if, you know, if the light isn't bright enough, but you have like a selfie light, which I am using. And if you kind of um, want to see what it looks like, you can um, go to my Amazon storefront and go to Content Creator to creator finds and you'll be able to find the self light that i'm talking about that's so ghetto let's get into a little example so let's just say i have the box right here right so i'll have a table which i have right here and what i'll do is i'll put the box on the table and i'm going to make sure i have a good visualization of the brand so i'm gonna slowly take my camera with make sure it has good lighting like i said and i'm just slowly just gonna film this part right here because why because it has their brand and it has like their little slogan better glasses clearer world right and so the next videos 
that I'm going to um, do is actually me trying on the glasses. I'm going to be showing the glasses case. I make sure that it's facing this way so the brand can um, be visual. And they're going to tell you all these things. Like I said, they're going to tell you how they want their content to be. They're either going to show you some for other influencers or it's going to just be like a script. Like they want you to say this and I want you to put this in the description, certain hashtags, all those things. So don't worry. Don't feel like you got to have like no idea how to create content. So let's say they don't give you that and you're just like, well, dang, now how am I going to create the content? I'm literally just showing you examples. Another big key point is transitions. You don't want to be taking out this and taking out the glasses and showing them. And then you go on to the next pair of glasses and showing them. And then it goes on to the next video. No. If you are like me, I will show you the glasses and I'm gonna put and I'm gonna do another video of me, you know, wearing the glasses, and it's gonna be the next video. So you want to make sure you have trans transitions. You have to know the audience attention span is very short. If you're trying to promote, you want to make sure a transition is like good, like do 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 do. So like I said, you showing them the glasses, which I'll take them out. So let's just say this is one video right here. You showing them the glasses. Boom. The next video. It's going to be you putting the glasses on, kind of showing them off. Boom. Next video. And so the next video, this is so ghetto because I can't put it in there. The next video will be the next pair of glasses. You showing them, putting it on. Boom. Next video. That's like down for a lot of influencers have. They don't know how to have the proper transitions in their video. And they're wondering why there's like the video didn't perform well. And they wonder why the freaking um, outcome didn't really turn out how they wanted it to be. It's because the quality of the video, the transitions, and how they were trying to promote the product. When you're promoting the product, you want to make sure that you having a freaking, the energy must be nice. Like if I'm trying to these glasses, I'm like, oh my gosh, all these glasses are so freaking cute. They fit me well. Like you want to have confidence. Like literally. So that's my biggest thing to you guys when you're trying to create content for brands transitions good lighting things of that nature if you guys still kind of don't understand if you guys need help you can always book a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me and we can go more um depth about everything that way you know i can help you guys better understand and i'll kind of even um help you try to film by put together um a content for a brand all right baddies my life is literally about to die which is so crazy but the last thing i'm going to get into is negotiating tips the first tip I'm going to give you is knowing your value or knowing your worth. You want to basically charge the brands, you know, your worth. You know, you, you're the only person that know how much energy it's going to take to create this content. Especially if you're going to be posting on multiple platforms, you need to get paid for that. So, there is not a specific answer for how much you should charge for brands. It's really not. Like, I always say charge based off your engagement. So if your gate rate is extremely high, you can probably charge like $350 to $1,000. Like there's plenty of influencers out here that get paid, you know, $9,000 or $5,000 just to post the IG reel because their engagement and their influence is like, is up there. So you want to make sure that you are very clear on your deliverables, meaning like um, how much you charge for story posts, a regular post, a reel, um, if some brands want you to post for like a week, you want to make sure you have that on there as well. It's really call it a rate sheet. And you can also create that on Canva um, as well, a rate sheet. And on my rate sheet, I have a couple of pictures and then I have how much I charge for IG stories, a post, um, even a Facebook post, things like that. So, so I'm pretty sure y'all have heard of UG UGC, which is user generated content. Now, a lot of times, there are brands that will use your content as an ad and you need to get paid for that. I had a um, brand that used my uh, content for an ad and I actually did not get paid for that. But still, like, I was, you know, pretty excited because that, that tells me that my content was really good. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that um, if they're going to do that, you need to negotiate um, a rate that they need to pay you because... A lot of times if a brand is going to run an ad, they're going to make a ton of money for it. And you need to make sure that you have money in your pocket. 
a lot of times brands will give you a contract to sign which is good but let's say if you are collaborating with the brand and they don't give you a contract that's fine you need to create one so that way you nothing can backfire on your end so what you're going to do is you're going to go to chat gpt and you're going to have a certain prompt and um you can be like um can you create me a contract between me and um you know the brand name and etc etc it's literally going to write out a contract for you you can read over it, customize it how you please, and you can literally give it to the brand. That way you can sign it or they can sign it or both you guys can sign it. That way if they try to do something sneaky and try to post your content anyway without paying you or letting you know, then that's a problem. And that goes into more legal, you know, litigation, you know, things like that. Guys, do not lowball yourself because that's exactly what I did. I lowball myself. I was scared to you know um have a higher price you know for my content because i felt like i wouldn't get a no and like i said if they say no that's that's fine if you charge 280 dollars for just a reel then that's what you charge and if they can't come you know compel with that then okay fine but let's just say that they still want to work with you vivid but they can only do like two hundred dollars they only do 180 190 if you choose to work with them for that price then that is on you don't try to go in and try to negotiate something else if you guys already have agreed on that price and so like i always say go into this with a positive mindset know that you can do this if everybody else is doing it you can do it too and just make sure that you're putting out that really good content because brands look at that content if they're looking at your content they're also thinking like okay if they are trying to promote my brand this is what the content gonna look like you know what i mean so just like i said just make sure you're going this with a very positive mindset don't blow by yourself and don't try to you know change your prices up now as your engagement and following just keeps building and building and building the higher it goes i've seen people get five thousand dollar brand deals um I've seen people get way more and even with long-term partnerships with long-term partnerships it now it may be in the beginning of your collaboration they may tell you like they either want a short-term collaboration or long-term collaboration I myself do have a long-term collaboration or pay collaboration or partnership a lot of times if a brand is reaching back out to you for a long-term partnership, that just means that the collab, the last or the previous collaboration worked very well. And I want to continue to work with you and for you to put out the content. Just make sure if it's going to be a long-term partnership, make sure that you're going to get paid exactly what you need to be paid. I don't care if that's $350 a month or $1,000 a month or $100 every week or you know, whatever the case may be, whatever that you guys work out and negotiate is make sure that it fits you and for the brand. So um, if let's just say you work with the brand, everything went well, and they, you know, and you kind of like, you know what, I really like working with this brand, and I want to do a long term partnership with them. All you're going to do is just go to them and just reach back out, but it's going to be a different pitch from your original pitch. So if you kind of just like, I really don't know how to write that, you can literally go to ChatGPT and ask them to kind of write you a long-term brand partnership collaboration pitch in a sense, and it can literally help you create that pitch. If they say yes, awesome. If they say no, that just means that their brand isn't really looking for long-term partnerships. So that's basically, you know, about long-term partnerships. All right, boss babes, that concludes my video. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope this video gave you some more um, insights on how to become an influencer in 2024. I know this video probably may be confusing. I'm going to link all of my products in my description, including um, for the consultation call and my influencer starter kit, where I literally give y'all a lot more information, especially about the media kit and brands that I personally work with. But like I said, make sure you guys like and subscribe. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Until then, see ya.